Uh, hey, uh, so does anybody have anything to say? Uh, anything? Well, I mean, I, I, NXT's just been on a roll lately. Uh, the, 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 as we approach Survivor okay, I don't Series, understand these, why uh, they think they're going they're to in, war they're, with they're AEW. Do you think that's a problem? That they We're talking about hell in a cell. Keep in mind, they walked into that pay per view with, with, with only three matches. That is highly unacceptable. People paid their hard earned money to go to hell in a cell with three matches and even and after that, know. you put the fiend in the main event, and then so it gets disqualified or it's a no contest, a and all of that, Who is and the smudge hammer to the skull. Did they, they forget about the short. times when Mick Foley took the bump off the cell, and then you have Gordon Jewel. They go to Saudi Arabia, and the fiend solves him and becomes champion, which makes absolutely no sense. Couldn't you have just done it as survivors? It would have been much, much better. You guys. Like take that. money over oh, what the fans I mean, actually want. Why? I mean, I don't understand. So much skill. I just don't get. Guys, guys, need... guys, guys, what? guys, what? guys, guys. What? Guys, we're not answering the one important question that we've never been able to answer. Well, then what are we not addressing? We still need to address why, Dan. Why? Why in God's name was the streak broken? This again? Oh, this son of a bitch right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after a one month sabbatical, welcome to the new and improved. No, not really. It's still the same old thing. Welcome. Way to, to get him hyped. <laughs> Welcome to the return episode of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. We are back here with a very special return episode. This is the most, I think, well put together episode in a while. Yes, we are as well put together as WWE 2K20. Yeah, <laughs> glitches and all. Glitches and all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in case you've forgotten, I don't know, it's been about a month. <clears throat> let me introduce the man. The mastermind behind it all. Ah, oh, don't butter me up. I think he was talking about himself. Oh, my son. bad. Continue. Go ahead. Son of a. Carry on. The mastermind behind it all. The reason why the three of us are sitting here today. Oh, it sounds like me. He is queuing up the thing about jobs, and I kind of carry that. Oh, oh, sorry. Continue. Can we get those unemployment contracts ready? Yeah, thank Speaking you. Speaking of unemployment, uh, all of our security team is on it. So, yeah. What? We don't have security. Oh. I don't know who you're talking to. Yeah, there's like literally just three of us in here. I think he's saying this. Oh. Has it been that long? It has been that long. You want to tell him who you are at this morning? If you want to stop interrupting me. No Come respect on. around here. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the my mo- name <laughs> is the commish, the advocate, the legal counsel, the advisor, the jack of all trades. But what in God's name is he advising? I'm advising all of you to shut the hell up as I speak. The commish. And then you've got me, the man, Dan, the man. He has a little Irish Alaska Crocs accent in there. That's like borderline Finn Balor and Becky Lynch all in one. Well, good news is they're both from the same place. Your turn. <laughs> Do I get a turn or am I just going to get inter- interrupted again? Hey, it depends. You're going to keep belly aching? You're going to keep prolonging the introduction of yourself? Don't make me point? slop the head off you. Ah, shut up. <laughs> and of, co- of course, the host, the shant. Don't sound That's so it. defeated. Like the Undertaker's undefeated streak. Oh, God, he, he finds a way. He finds a way. Always. But I mean, honestly, welcome to the return of the best in the world! Anything! 
P for life. So we have a lot to talk about within this last month that we've kind of had a lot of. What's the best way of saying it? pent up aggression, frustration, annoyance, hogwash? We've had a lot of hogwash. Hogwash. Hashtag push Cesaro. Yeah, I knew he would find a way to <laughs> squeeze it in there. Uh, I am so mad right now. Why? Tell us. Dan. Why are you so angry? Pourquoi? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to answer. Pourquoi? Um, Pourquoi? Porque no. no Porque por- no los dos. That has nothing to do with it. Does it though? Does it though? Here we go. Okay, let's... <laughs> he finally did it at least. <laughs> what? You interrupted. That's you get cute. a win. We do not want these people tuning back in for the first time in a month, and this is how we treat them. Let's I can guarantee you more than half of them probably clicked off the video Whose already. fault is that? It's my fault? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not that we're pointing the fingers. But here. yes. Okay, I I got nothing. Anyway. Much like WWE. Um, we have a lot to talk about. Where do we even start? I think Hell in, yeah, Hell in a Cell, because we did the Hell in a Cell preview, and we never even got a chance to review it or give our thoughts. So Well, we didn't because, of course, that was the time we were deciding that we needed this, and it seems like we're all fully energetic and charged back up. Yes. Even though it's not an immediate return, we still have figured within this last month so, so much <laughs> Well, let's start with Hell in a Cell. I mean, I, I have matches here. I mean, do you guys we want to do the full review? I, I I don't know that we need to. We can mention all the matches, okay, so but I feel like we should gloss through. Some I'll go of through them. all nine, and okay. then you guys decide. Okay. Uh, prelim show: Natty versus Lacey ends in submission. <clears throat> all right, we'll talk about that match when we get to Crown Jewel, I guess. But and then the start of the show: the last Irish last kicker. Becky Lynch versus some, Say it. Some blue haired <laughs> Idiot. I was gonna say idiot. Okay, Basha Sanks, how's that? Yeah, her. Satcha Banks. In the uh Hell in a Cell match for the Raw Holomans Championship. Match of the night. I enjoyed it. And they made yeah. it they made it a good match. Yeah. And they left the belt on uh on the man, which uh Good. Great. I, I don't even have... I, I haven't been able to, like... Watch it? No, not that. Keep a track of... Who. Oh, who? Because I, I, I wrote it down, but I didn't do the pointing system. But it's I... Okay. <laughs> uh, Daniel Bryan and Roman versus Rowan and Harper. You could have gone somewhere with this, but th- I think this was, like, the last thing in that storyline, which was stupid. I just wanted to know who the third man was, and we couldn't even get that. Wasn't this? Didn't this lead right up to the draft, though? Didn't the draft happen right after? Sort of, yeah. Cell? So they were just kind of fizzling stuff out, so that then they could just press the reset button. Yeah. To to only screw up again and then press the reset button maybe three months later. Essentially, yes. Clearly, uh, Randy Orton versus Ali. Oh and, yeah, that happened. Yeah, that's about. That's um, add-on match. You went into this thing with only three matches. Yeah. Was it most of this pay-per-view, Adam? Yeah. Yep. Which, if I paid for a ticket and I was live in attendance, I would have felt kind of ripped off. But uh, Especially when you get to the end of the night and you find out how the whole thing ends. But That's why we move forward to the Kabuki Warriors retaining their tag team belts. Didn't they oh, no. win it? Winning oh, their they tag team belts versus the former champions that should have stayed champions, Alexa Bliss versus and Mickey Rose. Courtesy of the Poison Mist. I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love Alexa. Nikki's all right. She, I know she's more your flavor. Um, but... Because she's uh, your flavor of crazy? But Asuka and Kyrie, Beautiful. I just... Uh, I voiced my concern the other day that they're, they're crutching too much on the Tajiri aspect of this whole thing. Because I think every match they've had has ended in the Poison Mist. And it's like, okay. Or at least every promo. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is that they're both competent wrestlers, and I get that they're heels. But you don't need to you don't need to have them be full heel tactic. Well, you don't need them to be cheaty, um, 
shady heels all the yeah. time because they can carry their own. They can be the that heel team that occasionally cheats so if you, they either want to or need to, but they can also kick your ass on their get own. Get the job done. So you're saying this is a booking concern. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because oh. they're being booked as like weak. They're strong warriors. Yeah. The, the they name warriors. War, warriors in the name. Just saying. Like, it's not the Kabuki schoolgirls. I mean, Although that would have... Okay, see, <laughs> now I'm, I'm thinking of something else. Uh, alternate history. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Moving forward. Well, speaking of history, delete it. Um, <laughs> delete. <laughs> delete. Yeah. Uh, the Wonderful. Viking Raiders and Braun Strowman versus the OC. I don't even remember what happened. Again, this I was just okay. Won, right? This was just added on. Um, they won by DQ. Yeah. Um, so they didn't have the decency to book a definitive finish for a match that was match added on. on. <laughs> the least you could have done was give it a definitive finish. Just saying. Yeah, you could have had Carl Anderson take the loss to Braun Strowman. It wouldn't yeah. have hurt him that much. Give Braun's a something. big ass guy. Anyway. Uh, uh, then you got the newly redubbed Shorty Gable defeating King Corbin. I, I mean, How long has this rivalry been going? It was it was like a month and a half or no, it's been longer because it's been since King of the Rings King started. King of the Ring finals. Jesus. Oh, it was from the beginning of that. Was wasn't it? Because yeah. I thought it started because Gable didn't get into King of the Ring because of Baron, and then he got in during like a last chance uh, thing. And that's right. See, they do it so much you forget. Like, um, I'll be honest. Um, I don't know why they had to rebrand him as something stupid like Shorty Gable or Shorty G. Um, yeah. Uh, but short, shorty G. But I don't so need it. Stupid. I would have been fine if we were just bi- like, because Chad Gable's a competent wrestler too. He's good actually. He, he could be. Yeah. He could be a, a, a believable mid tier guy as because he he's your um. He's in your your Chris Jericho, Stevie Richards, Kurt Angle level of technical ability. He could absolutely be a, be a credible mid card champion, and they just don't pull the trigger on that. They instead put him with Baron, who I guess is still being billed as like an upper mid carder, but not high enough to actually challenge for the title. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really care about the. I would have taken Shorty thing. as like a nickname for Chad Gable, you know, but, but for that to become his name. <laughs> I agree with that because it's like what. It was awfully short notice. Oh my lord! Here we go with the puns. Any any more? Do you have Do you have any more things that you want? I'm running have a lot. I'm, I'm running a little bit short oh on those. God. <sighs> he he got a double in there, little and short. Moving forward. Gee, I wonder if he uh, will come up with any more during the course of the show. Apparently, if he can find a way to one up the height. I sometimes, you know, might come up a little bit short when it comes to Oh my to god, that's like three that. in a row of the same one you lost. Moving on. <laughs> uh, Blonde Cena defeating the former and then reclaiming whatever. Yeah, waste of a match at that point. It's a, it's a what, her, the rain lasted a week. It's a stat patter. What was the point of it? I think they're just trying to get to yeah, 16. They're, they're, they were moving Charlotte along. She has a long way. time in her career still. What, she's going to retire in two years? Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe it's they're just trying to make it, like, a, put her within a safe mm-hmm. distance so that they can then take her out of the title picture for a while, but still have plenty of time down the line to do it. But it's still stupid. <sighs> what were they doing at one point for the week? Because she reached 10, they would... Added into her name. Oh, like instead of the L O would be Char oh. Ten T C E. Were they doing like Charlotte? that? Yeah. I didn't even see that. That's Are you serious? On her in, on their on the WWE Instagram account, they would have it like that. That's Charlotte true. with the ten right where the L and the O. That, that's be. annoying. Well, here's the thing. A week later, she loses to the to newly short, revitalized, short, short reimaged, hair, short-haired slasher Bailey. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll like, rest in peace, Bailey buddies. Okay, right, so said, we're gonna talk about it. Okay, let's talk about it. She said, "What was what was her quote the week after?" Bailey. Yeah, I, something something, and then you die. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Like how cringe was it to hear her say it? 
I'm just saying, if you don't script the promos, these superstars can do X. I would have preferred if she said, if she's truly healed, if she had said it like, life's a bitch and then you die. Yeah. I would have believed that. And when you said it in our group chat, oh, like WWE, go fuck yourself. I would have stood up and applauded and believed it was real <laughs> at that point. I'm uh, sorry. I, I, I can't buy into her. I don't, you have to tell us how you're buying into her. It's not so much buying, it's it's a much needed turn for Bailey because I just felt like it was just one dimensional. It had come kinda of come to a point where it's like Well, it's cause I, I I don't think they knew what to do with her. So the obvious thing for them was, well, let's just turn the character on its head instead of being this fun fun loving yet borderline heel huggy girl, let's just make her hate everybody now. Let's make her the soccer mom that complains at Target. So we're making her the annoying soccer mom at her kid's practice throwing a chair? Yep. That's where we're going with this? Yep. With your SmackDown Women's Champion, Karen. Ah. Quick question. Is Basha Sinks injured? Uh, I don't know. Because she's, she's fragile, so she's, she's probably. She, she's supposed to compete tonight. Wow, Dan. She is. She's been hurt several times. Well, he's not saying she's soft. S A no 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 we ain't doing it. Um, because if you notice, while Bailey she's became been heel, sideline. she's been on the sideline. So it's like you brought her back. She yeah, had this but, great match with Becky and Hell in a Cell, and then all of a sudden it's like I think maybe she's just healing because maybe I think she did get hurt at Hell in a Cell, I, but it wasn't I like th- major. Yeah, I think they might have said that too. Um, because she's competing against Nikki Cross tonight. And oh. and maybe they were kind of, I mean, I, it's mo- most likely that they're they're just trying to uh, give her some time to heal um, from that. But mm-hmm. I was gonna say may- maybe with the fact that they're kind of planting the seeds for the four horsewomen stuff because they keep having the crossover with that yeah. that they were kind of holding her in the background so that then she'd be that like right spark yeah. But we'll see. So again, you you felt. The loss of the championship for her to win it the like six days after was unnecessary. I'm like it triggered the heel turn, but you could have done that earlier. Like you didn't have to take the belt off of her and then put it back and then on prove her. A point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, shit, you could have gone because who was it? It was when they tried to turn Becky. They could have. They could have essentially treated it the same way, where the match is like almost out of her grasp and then she cheats gets disqualified retains her belt and then she comes out the next night and she's like I've had it I'm done with this <sighs> like have her cut her hair on live TV that would have been fun well, at least like strands of it so someone in the back and so, like, right, someone could fix it up. up yeah yeah. get it sure how we agreed to and yeah. then now you come out as a, as Karen yeah most soccer moms are named Karen if you've ever noticed not ages. It's, it's a meme online. And then we have the most disappointing <laughs> cluster mm. three. Tell us how you. I, I I don't want to curse. Just one. can I get one? How the fuck do you end it in a disqualification? They didn't. They it did. They did a ref stop it. How do you end the most violent match? In all of WWE history, Dan, why did the match stop like that? Why and how? Oh, Seth Rollins versus The Fiend. And how in a cell? Um, the first thing I thought of was uh, Undertaker versus Mankind. I'm like. Nobody stopped that match. Yeah. If there was ever a match that needed to be stopped, it would have been that one. It's the one where Mick Foley legitimately almost died. died almost twice. And yet we take a protected headshot to the to the head with a sludgehammer, and the ref just loses it and goes, ring it's the bell. Over. It's over. Um, he didn't even check on the fiend after that hammer shot before this calling true. for the bell. Uh, but I mean, credit to Seth, he really brought down the hammer. In trying to retain his championship. Um, that's the best you got. Yep. That's as much as I cared to put oh, into that God. one. Um, Bring it down. Yep. So, yeah, oh, I, I was I was also disappointed. I, act, I think I actually... 
I might have spoiled the end of this one for myself, which I'm not. I'm not one of those people who's like super torn up if I like accidentally yeah. spoil something like that. Because I'm still then gonna go back and watch how we got to that, which I did, and uh, the match was okay. Um, I hate the red light. I hate the eleven stomps. Well, that too. Um, uh, messaging towards that, annoyance towards that. It's all in agreement. What else do you get? Did you guys dislike? Um, I just obviously dislike the end I of hit, the match. Everything after was like the, so. So going off the eleven stomps thing real quick. That's one of the problems you've got with a lot of these with, with the way that WWE builds their their people nowadays. It's that they keep them with a very limited signature move set. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. Rollins had at one point like four different finishing moves. Falconer. Hmm? Falconer. Yeah. Pedigree. Falcon Arrow, Pedigree, uh, the Stomp, the Blackout Knee, um, the, the uh, Super Kick. Super Kick. Um, I know. I think there was another one in there somewhere too. But he had a bunch of different moves. Did and, he have a submission finish? Not uh, that I recall. I don't think so. Okay. But he had a bunch of different moves. He had more moves than Roman did. So like, when Roman's doing Superman Punch Spear, Superman Punch Spear to Brock Lesnar. It's kind of the same thing, but at least there's two moves, as opposed to just ah, 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 stomp. Oh no, ah, stomp. <laughs> I I would have taken like maybe three at max, where he stomps him, and the fiend kind of just gets up and goes, "What do you got?" Maybe he punches him down or uses a chair. Okay, one more stomp. The fiend gets back up. Come I, at I, me. I would have had it. Okay. So after the second one, I would have the fiend get back up and do what he does, where he gets all freaked out. Like, yeah. But not freaked out in a sense like, oh, it's hurting, but more like freaking out, like I'm gonna now kill you. Yeah, yeah. Rage. At this yeah. point, but maybe a curb stomp with a chair. Yeah. Like at least convince me that yeah. you're trying to take the fiend down. Yeah. But you can't even do that. It's, you just keep what? stomping him into the mat. The funny thing <sighs> is, you guys might have seen like during recent live events. That's kind of been their thing. A spot for them. What the Stomp, Fiend gets up. Kick to the app. Stomp. Well, and that's the Fiend point get... of the, the live events, unfortunately, is that it's a, it's your focus audience. It's your focus group. To see how they react to to you trying to do stuff. You hear about that all the time. Oh, suddenly Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns are fighting in the in the, the main event at the dark uh, or at the live event. Okay, and that led us immediately into the feud with Brian and Rowan and Roman. Yeah. Okay. So it's them giving them time to practice, seeing how the audience reacts. Um, same thing here. And the audience reaction to the live events was fine, but I think they only did four. As they only did the 11. Yeah, they only did four stomps, and then uh, the, I forget how the match ended, but I think it might have been, those might have been ending in disqualifications too. They usually do shenanigans in the. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, this was bad. So you you were convinced that the red light was an annoyance to you, right? Okay, so especially at Hell in a Cell, when you're inside of a red cage that's already casting shadows on things, then you're dropping all the lights to put more red light on these people. I don't. I wasn't there, so I don't know, but I can only imagine it was horrendous for anybody beyond the eighth row to see <laughs> that match. But that's my opinion. That's why I didn't like it for Hell in a Cell. And then, kind of the same thing with uh, Crown, Jewel. Crown Jewel, is that then they're out in the corner doing stuff, and it's dark, and they're casting red light, which is not... Have you ever been under... Have you ever been in a dark room, or a room that's being filled with some sort of weird light? It's hard to see. Yeah. Because it it's, doesn't... It's like image sensory. Yeah, it doesn't... Because it doesn't illuminate things the way the no, white light it, does. It, it's so then, supposed to, like, cause, like, I guess what? Disorientation? Yeah. And, like, I... And, and maybe that's what they're going for, is to make that unease, but it's also making it harder to see and enjoy yeah. the match. And so that's why I don't like it. Well, I, I told him about this when we were doing a, another project that we worked on. Um, supposedly, the, the red lighting is supposed to be, like, a thing of, like... The red room, yeah, uh, in the sense of a, a murderer and his victim, yeah, that the murderer is supposed to, I guess, kill whatever is inside the red room torturously, villainously, and then like just an all out massacre. But 
if it wasn't up to the fiend to kill Seth, it was, it was supposed to be figured as the other way around. Yeah. It's the sledgehammer ending and the whole thing of like, all right, well, 11 curb stomps, beat the hell out of him, still nothing. It's like, I can't kill what's supposed to kill me in a yeah. sense. Like, they're trying to do this whole thing of like. They're trying to put a psychological thriller in the context of a. Exactly. Fight. But the thing is, like, this. Does not work well with a red cage. Yeah. With the fact that it, it's a it's a larger room. Like if this was done like if this was a boiler room brawl. Yeah. That would make sense to me because it's in a closed room. It's not as big. The, I'm, I'm, the point of all that massive like weaponry and like injury and hurt and pain that makes sense. A match where you don't someone. have an audience makes sense for this because for, exactly. then it has to be intimate. Something you have to watch on a screen. Yeah, that's fine. But trying to watch this live, I just imagine is going to be uncomfortable. Imagine if you're like right at the first row. Yeah, like, probably have I'll, to squint a little bit and just. Cause, uh, cause, especially at Hell in a Cell, because then you're staring through the the holes yeah. in the cage. Like you're going, wondering, like, what's the cage? What what's... are the? Especially, like, and th- this is coming from somebody who doesn't have perfect eyesight. Oh, I'm here. Um, when it like at night, I sh- realistically should always have my glasses to drive because my sight gets worse once it's dark out. And I know I have a friend who uh, who I went to uh, high school and college with who is legally blind at night. So like once the sun goes down, she she's not allowed to drive because she cannot see. Um, and that's the same thing here. Is like if I'm in the arena and I'm in the dark with this already garbage kind of light, I'm gonna be like, wait, who's doing what? Who's sw- is Seth is is Seth holding? No, nope, he's he's choking Seth out. It, it, I feel like it would be difficult to actually decipher what you're seeing, yeah. and that's why I think they should stop with the red light. I mean, it's fine that they wanted to try it, but I'd call it a day. Yeah, like, I get what, and all credit to WWE for giving total control to Bray for everything he does. But even, this is the one thing I'd be like, dude, okay, like, you tried it, it worked, you gotta come up with something different now. Like, come up with something new for your... Have the red light just during his promos, like if he's in the ring or something, but not during matches where there is movement and that's... Yeah. For the, the entire is, match. You don't get much of a promo out of the feed. You yeah. only get a promo out of Bray. That's why the Funhouse works. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which is then, why I don't think there's really a place for the red light. I just don't think yeah, it no. needs to be there. I, I think it's, it's it should be done at this point. After Crown Jewel, it's like, all right, you did it. It worked. Whoever you're moving on to next, we'll see. Because um, he's more of a, uh, for lack of a better term, he's more of a uh, boogeyman, Baba Duke kind of character. Yeah. So having him enter with the lantern in the dark, and then he gets in the ring, and then the lights come up, and now you can see him in his full glory. Like, he's got a cool costume. Yeah. And if I can't see that, you're taking something away from the character. Yeah. Obviously, this... Would you before we get into Crown Jewel? Would you crown this as the worst pay per view this year? Mm. Like, on, I'm, like I'm, honest I'm, question I'm, to both of you. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like trying if, to think timeline wise, like well, what each pay per view kind of had. Probably for a pay per view that wasn't even fully do set. You need up, me to go to the through the list. I I would probably agree. Also, just it it was poorly executed. Yeah. I don't even think we really need to, to go. Okay, how that. about this? I'll, I'll give you our, our lowest scoring. Because I'm, I'm just giving us all eights. Okay. For how long it's, all eight matches. Okay. Our lowest scoring that we called it was stopping ground. That, that was meh, but at least you had a full card. And a planned card. Yeah. With this just being like... Oh, we only had Seth versus Bray, uh, Be- Becky and Sasha, and Bailey and um, Charlotte. That's it. That's, that's all it. you had. That's oh, all you let's had. throw in five well, more matches and, that and don't make sense. I don't even think oh, no. Bailey and Bailey and, and no, no, no. Charlotte it, it was wasn't Roman on the card. And it was Roman Daniel. and Brian. Roman it was and that, Brian. That, that match. Yeah, yeah. So you had uh, Becky, Roman, and Seth. Which probably explains matches. the title change because they're like, well, let's just let's just throw them a treat, have a title change in there, and then. But the, the, treat. but the thing is, it's like all that had to happen because prior to that pay per view was the premiere, the re premiere of Raw. Yeah. 
the brand new live television premiere of NXT, and the new Fox deal of SmackDown. Well, I'm I'm glad at least they don't call it SmackDown Live. It's just SmackDown. Smack, now. SmackDown on Fox or WWE on Fox or whatever. <laughs> SmackDown. But mo- but moving forward, yeah. I, I would say all in all, I, I would say this one earned the title of, of worst pay-per-view. Even though the match quality wasn't totally gnarly, it was the fact that it was an ill-conceived, poorly executed uh, Last minute yeah. Yeah. shenanigans. Especially since the, then we had Crown Jewel, what, two two weeks later? Roughly. Two to three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so okay, I, I think we should just stick to like pay per views and then go to our next okay. topic. So we have Crown Jewel once I'm, again I'm happening. We're going to talk about the issues afterwards once we get there, but <laughs> it'll be all within the discussion of it. But uh, <laughs> let's uh, let, let's just start with what the shenanigans is, since apparently it's okay now to just hire boxers and former MMA fighters into the WWE now. So I think I'd heard for a long time that Cain Velasquez was voicing interest in potentially popping popping over at some point. Because he had told Dana White, like, I've been here for years. It's not what I'm interested in anymore. I want to do something else. Like, WWE is not the first thing I ever want to do, but it is something I want to do. Like, he's not taking the full Ronda approach, but at least he's honest about, hey, my MMA career is over. Yeah. Because he's not a he's not a spring chicken anymore in terms of mixed martial arts fighting. No. no. Um, so we we uh, he he had made made it clear that he, it was something he was interested in doing. So I I'm I'm not super torn up about Kane coming over. I think that it wasn't handled great. Um, we need especially, to talk about that too. Especially because Brock and Kane should have been a big money match. They threw it on this show, and the way that they executed that match is meh. Which I love. I had wait, I always thought that Kane would have stayed in MMA long enough for Brock to eventually come back. Because yeah. there had been for years, these last two years, oh, Brock wants to leave. He wants to go back to UFC. He wants to compete again in mixed martial arts. You know, what are we going to do with it? The problem is, it's just that we never got that. Yeah. And now we get, oh, Kane's coming over. We're finally going to get the rematch as, like, that, not just WWE fans wanted, but MMA fans wanted yeah. as well. We this should have get... been a WrestleMania match, And if I'll, we're being I'll honest. be honest, I didn't watch this match yet, but I feel like I heard it was super short. Is that correct? It was, yes. like, a minute and a half or something. Two minutes, it, ten seconds. Yeah, Can it I was, just say it something? It was less than a round of a, net, of a U, UFC fight. I loved it. Well, well, okay, why did you like it? Which, by the way, it's the first match on the card without the pre-show. And I think it's like a minute 40? Two minutes 10. Oh. Um, Not including the long-ass pathway of an intro. <laughs> um, I just, I, I loved it. Like, uh, when it comes to UFC and WWE, I'm always a WWE guy, so I was obviously cheering for Brock on this one. Um, and the fact that he made quick work of the guy, you know. So. You, you also weren't even aware that they were mirroring their fight. Because I told you that is a uh, Brock tapped to a Camara lock, and then in, they imitated the it. So it, it kind of made it a little bit more sweeter for me. Um, because I told you guys the last thing that I wanted it was for Kofi to lose the title to Brock, and then Brock gives it to Kane Velasquez. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. Well, that's the thing. Like I guess Kane Velasquez joins like an elite lineage of particular wrestlers who debut on a pay per view and win, or at least get in the main event match. Yeah. But. Obviously, he didn't win. I guess we got the definitive answer that it's still a split match between the two. Maybe, like you said, it could be WrestleMania implications. That's where it should have been. Should have been. Maybe you finally get a definitive who's the better. Like a, like a third final fight. Like now do we build Kane from here till January. Let him train. You know, Keep him off camera if he really is going to be in the WWE now. And then book book it for April. I don't know. I wouldn't maybe. be surprised if we see them in a cage match at Mania. Ooh. Just because it mirrors the right, UFC vibe. Right, right. I could see WWE having that already in, in their minds where they're like, all right, what if 
What? I don't know who I am, but... You're probably like one of those guys from Fox, because I could really picture a Fox executive right Just kind of hunched over and like, all right, all right, listen. Vince, Vince, what if, what if we put him in a cage at WrestleMania? Damn it! I like it. <laughs> we'll call it the Octagon Match. Uh, you can't, you can't do that. Hexagon. We'll call it a Hexagon uh, Match. Uh, Vince, they, they already have an Octagon. You, you, really, you really can't. Nonagon. We'll do Don't a nonagon. question it'll me, have, damn it. It'll have nine sides. We'll call it good. Um, Punjabi me. prison match. I'll do that. Uh, excuse me, sir. That's already been done. What was yeah. the other match or where what? it was a cage in a cage with dogs surrounding it? I don't remember. Was that a thing? An Attitude Era? Yeah. Oh, it, was bro- oh, it was Al Snow versus uh, Big Boss Man. That's weird. The so prison weird. yard? They pooped. Was it a prison yard match? It was like a... They, dog they, dog was it like dog something match? War war cage match or something That's like that? Stupid. Anyway, I'm gonna look it up while you guys continue. So, talking. um, yeah, I could see that being the end game here. Um, thinking about it right now, I'm uninspired. Yes, me too. Because I'm looking like I look at that in my head and I go, I just see Brock Lesnar and Cain Velasquez in a square cage, hitting each other. Kennel from Hell match, by the way. What is it? Kennel from Hell. Is that what they call it? That's what they call. That's the official name for it here. That's stupid. What? Um, Steve Lombardi is a special guest referee. God, was he bombarded? The Brooklyn so, Brawler, man. <laughs> so yeah, I I don't care. What? what any, any other thoughts on this one? No. We'll see between now and and April if it's something we even give a rat's ass about. But next match. Uh, the nine team tag team turmoil match yeah. with uh, the following teams the LC, I, I Raiders, New Day, Revival, B Team, Heavy Machinery, sure. Ziggler Rude, Hawkins Ryder, and Luke Cha. I Luke mean, Cha. I think the only, Luke the Cha. only, the most important thing that we took away from this is that uh, the OC is now the best in the world! As far as tag teams go. Yeah, because that's <laughs> essentially what this match was supposed to prove, right? Yeah. Because we didn't have a tournament, so, oh, let's just chuck in all nine teams. Can I say something? Desperate attempt to keep those two under contract. Yeah, because... That's they, what they, they're doing. And, and well, it, didn't they get, like, a five-year extension? Yeah, but yeah. if you've noticed, since then, it's been tag team titles, teaming up with AJ, best tag team in the world, so it's like... Guys, let's we, butter you up. But we know Don't that, you. okay, one, we know AJ's recent re-sign is like his final Last one. contract yep. in so anything. So now they're trying, to, they're trying to strike while the iron is still warm. Yeah. Um, uh, the so, irony. Which is why we're also seeing them interact with Finn again, is they're probably going to go Teasing full, it, full yeah. um, club. Full club. Club club. Uh, before, club. before they leave. Especially given the circumstances... Oh, speaking of which. Given the circumstances following Crown Jewel, one of the articles that I read is that a lot of people are like, I'm out. As soon as my shit is done, I am gone now. Are you saying they're going to be all out? Yes. Oh. I, I mean, they might... Well, they're not going there, but... I'm they're, just they're like, li- terminology-wise... Okay, I guess we could we could talk about the controversy while talking about the pay per view. So apparently, what it was said that half the roster wasn't allowed to leave due to more than half of the roster. What due to like uh, money? So so what? So I'll, I'll break it down because I don't know if you guys actually read all all of this. Stuff. I can't, I read into it. I read into it too. Yeah. And so what I read was the main cause here is that the crown prince did not pay Vince. X number of dollars. So Vince... Are you saying Satan didn't get all his jewels? Correct. And so... Hey, do you get it? So the, the okay. crown prince did not pay Vince all of his money. So Vince said, all right, well then Saudi Arabia doesn't get the show. So he cut off the live feed of the show to Saudi Arabia. Obviously, you've still got the crowd, and the crown prince is probably there somewhere. But um, the rest of the country didn't get access to it. For a chunk of the show. I think it eventually came back on or it was on a delay. 40 minute delay, I think is yeah. what they said. So it was, it was cut off for a while. And so then you have people like Vince and Brock and a couple of other people, Paul, who left before the rest of the, the crew. See, why would you do that? 
How can you, Vince McMahon, leave with half, more than half your superstars? And that is part of why so many of them are angry. They're like, he fucking abandoned us in Saudi Arabia. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what was going to happen. When I heard that, that they were told to get off the plane, I was like, this could go really bad. And he's really psychotically crazy at any moment. Yeah. So I was really nervous until I heard them say that they got home. Um, but so they were, they got on their plane, Vince was gone, Brock was gone, which is why we were able to see Brock on the show the next night is because he's one of the only people who got out. No, well, doesn't he and, have his own plane? Yeah, because he flies private. Yeah. Um, and then you had the people who smartly, as it turned out, um, refused to go. Daniel and, Bryans and Kevin yeah. Owens and yeah. And then your NXT superstars, which is part of why they're leaning so, they were leaning so heavily into it, is they got them there, nick of time. From what I heard. Plus you had like Sean and Hunter already in the US at that point. They didn't go to Saudi. And so then you've got all the superstars getting taken off the plane because of mechanical issues. Now you heard uh, there were a couple of different accounts. There were some that said that there were armed armed, uh, uh, soldiers there. Some said no there were no armed soldiers. Which could just be them playing ball and being like, no, <laughs> shut up. No armed soldiers here. Shut up. Um, but shut up. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, like AJ said, I don't know what everybody was talking about. I talked to the pilot. Pilot said there was mechanical errors, uh, and that's what was going on. But it was still, we were stuck there for five, six hours after we were supposed to fly home, which is why we missed everything. Um, but a lot of the crew apparently is like done with this yeah like you're probably gonna see- did you see harper's post no what is it it was an it was just an image of harper and he's like looking into the camera like while someone's taking a photo and like you can tell he's like i'm done like i'm not doing this was anymore. he o- yeah was he part of the was he over there he was over there but i guess he never made an appearance on the card which is why did he go in the first place yeah it's a it's a waste of money wait um, but was he on the uh oh the battle royal, royal? maybe maybe that's yeah. it yeah but, but I remember I've seen him in the Battle War. But the fact of the matter is, it, it's, it's getting, not worth it it's anymore. It's getting out of The hand. fact that every single show they've done over there has come with some sort of clusterfuckery means it should stop. Now, in all fairness... Especially I, if he's not getting paid. Like that, That's the point of this. Is the money... Yeah, the, the point is the money. And that's the only reason that we've been like, all right, well, whatever, WWE, you got to pay your bills. But if you're not even getting your billions of dollars from the Saudi prince before it's time to do the show to where you're then extorting him saying, you want your people to have the show? Penny up. Then it's not a lucrative deal anymore. They just extended their contract with them. Yeah. Yeah. But you're going to have a lot of people like, I'm not doing it. Yeah, you're going to have nothing but singles matches, and you're going to have like five of them. And you're going to have to like stretch them. You're going to have 45-minute single matches just to fill the card. Hell, I'm sorry. Like, AEW barely does more than 30-minute matches. And and that's even in their pay-per-view. Yeah. And their regular shows so far that I've seen, their matches are 15, 20 tops. Yeah. And to have that at a one at a pay per view, two in one of the hottest fucking countries in the world, where like heat is no joke. Yeah, like you're yeah. going in what October November, and it's like still a hundred degrees hot. Yeah, no, like who's gonna want to wrestle that long, that dehydrated, and like can, can we? Can I just like do the Kevin Nash finish, <laughs> finger poke of doom? Like it's I been mean, 44 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I did a read somewhere where someone was saying, like, all the stuff that Dave Meltzer was reporting is actually not true. So, I don't know. Everything you see and you hear, take it with a grain of salt. Because, like you said, Dan, someone said, no, everything was fine. It was just this. Someone else said, no, it was this. It was, like, a catastrophic, you know, deal. Like, it was a lot to, like, yeah. overall. So, I don't know. But it seems like, and I was pissed about this, and we can talk about it. How WWE was like, well, half of our superstars are not here. Bring in NXT. Let's get this going. And it's like, as opposed to you creatively constructing this, you were booked into a corner and you're like, how do we get out? Bring in NXT. Well, supposedly, even though some people were saying it was a Triple H show the following night, Vince still had final approval. Like, yeah. Vince, It's still a Vince show. Yeah. 
Um, but to go over the card real quick, yeah. uh, Monster versus Cesaro. Yeah. <sighs> we'll say it for him. Hashtag push Cesaro. Don't, he didn't get the push that night. Um, following with, I don't know why. I still don't know why this was at. I think this is just Fox like trying to convince other athletes. Yeah. Tyson Fury versus Braun. Oh, this was bad. So Tyson, <sighs> Tyson apparently has a, an actual boxing match coming up in February. A lot of belief is that he's do he he was only really doing this to create some extra buzz Exposure, around yeah. that. Um, I don't know why. Has he he now something I did I did I don't know if I mentioned if I said this to you guys but something that I did admire about Tyson was his his uh, adamance about this whole thing because apparently one of his promoters was like what are you doing why are why are you doing this if you get hurt you're out you're going to be out the fight in in february or you're screwing yourself over. and his opponent apparently talking trash was like he's probably hoping for that he's hoping to get hurt so he doesn't have to face me and that's boxer trash talk but the the thing that i read was that the promoter went to tyson and said you shouldn't do this and tyson said look this is a once in a lifetime opportunity if i don't do it what what am I what am I doing? I might as well do this because I don't know if it'll happen again. I'll be careful, relax. And he came in and he did it. It was eight minutes of a match. If WWE came to me and said, "Hey, do you want to be in a pro in a program for our pay per view?" If I had to take the power slam from Braun Strowman to have to to have that experience, I would say yes. It probably won't feel good. But I'd do it because when is WWE going to ask me to be in a, in a match again? I don't know if it's going to happen. So, Power Slam or Super Kick? Super Kick. I'd take Power Slam. I would, I, I would, I would be so afraid of the guy stuff. kicking my head off. Well, I, took, okay. I took a stage combat class, so I know how to. Like, Shawn not Michaels actually super kicking you in his prime. No, no, I ain't doing it. <laughs> no. So, you'd still take a Power Slam from I'd Braun? take a Power Slam. Now the only reason I would okay. probably stick with the super kick is because then you're not taking um, force downward. You just kind of go oh, and you fall backwards, yeah. so it's a little gentler on All your right. spine, your back. Submission move: sharpshooter or figure four? Uh, sharpshooter. Figure four. Sharpshooter. Figure I've, four. I've been in a sharpshooter. I've that, been a that figure four. They I don't know. We've it. had we've had different experience. That's it. Get over here. <laughs> I actually want to see this happen later. Maybe, so. maybe, maybe afterwards. All right. So the match was, what, eight minutes? He knocked him out. God bless Tyson Fury. He tried. He didn't even knock him out. He count, count out, got, which was, counted out, which is the one part where I'm like... He's coming back tonight on SmackDown. Of course he is. Because we got built towards the survivor. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Moving on. Uh, AJ Styles defending his uh, skipped it U.S. belt against Umberto Carrillo. I I was just wanted to give props to Umberto. Good job, uh, Umberto. He's been building himself up since the Super Bowl. He's also he's also in two K twenty, so he's doing something right because there's other people who are not. Yeah. Uh, moving on, the first and probably only women's match we'll ever get. Natty versus Lacey. Let's talk that's, about this. That's history. The, the best match I've seen Lacey put on. I think that's her only good match I've seen her put on. Um, I think other that, than her ring entrances now were just a nice shot. Yeah. I, so I don't. So yeah. the thing is, I don't know if they were yeah. more relaxed or more tense or more focused. I think mean, it whatever, was all. But whatever it was, it worked. It was a good match. The counters were clean for the most part. Um, I might have seen like one kind of off thing, but they seem to re- do really well in this. It's match. what I wish. I wish I could have gotten that Lacey this past summer against Becky. At one point. Well, because then you're stripping away the gimmick. No, I get it, but at least like from that point to. I think he's more talking the performance side. Yeah, like performance. If, that's if what I heard. You've had yeah. the cl- this clean, focused Lacey from day one. Ish. Lacey would be. A, she would have been SmackDown champion. Maybe because, I mean, Lacey's, I, she's I, been in the ring, but I feel like maybe she's been doing more work behind the scenes. Maybe. Don't get me wrong. I, I like Lacey. I, I love Lacey. I've always yeah. been an advocate yeah. of hers. It's just Even though at she's... first we were like, okay, you walked the ring. No, but like, that was we part being, of the gimmick. We were being critical of her 
It didn't mean we didn't like her. Yeah. It's not like Naya, where Naya is an yeah. annoying gimmick, and she's unsafe, and she's a bad actress. And she's dealing with... I'm, I'm just saying, like, if you book it correctly, her comeback okay. could be really good. Like, I hope... But it has to be booked the way you said. Like, though. I hope Naya's okay. Don't, I don't talk! She, I don't know where she is in her in her recovery. I know it was a gnarly thing she was dealing with, so I hope Double she's okay. Sandwich. But, but, I don't need her to come back. I don't. For a while. I don't or need her to all? come back. Oh. At all? I have enough decent talent on this roster where I don't need her to be taking up a spot. Well, let me ask you a question. In Especially your if we bring some of the NXT girls up. You've got so much good female talent down in NXT that could also be contributing to female feuds. And they just There's recruited enough. more women talent to... Uh... Uh, to the PC. Yeah. Recently. Let Let me just rattle off names real quick. These are the people that I believe are your women's roster. I'm so scared right now. Becky, Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey, uh, four horsewomen. Uh, Lacey, Natty, Natty, um, Dakota, uh, Io, Rhea, uh, Candice, uh, Shayna. Yeah. How Dana. dare you? What? <laughs> what? Are you concerned that somebody else's name is going to pop up on this list? Um, oh, no, someone's name who hasn't Shana. popped on the list. Lexi. Lexi. Um, Nikki. Oscar, Kyrie. Um, her. I'm just going to say her for his case. No, you could say it. Rhonda. Rhonda. Um, that's what? Did I? You 16. 16. That's at least 16 women. That's enough for like a female queen of the ring. Yeah, and those are your top people. And you still can fill it in with another 14 from NXT. Yeah, I didn't even mention Bianca or Mia or um, the other two. Um, Jasmine. Jasmine and, <laughs> Jasmine and yeah. um, The fact that he says the other two and we know who he's talking about. The, yeah. or, or Tony Storm or... Dana Brooke. Rhea Ripley. Dana Brooke. I said Rhea. Um, but yeah, there's <laughs> there's a there's a, there's a ton of them. I'm, she's I don't there. need Nia. Doesn't need I don't need Tamina. I just don't need the big. I don't need the big girls to 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 be here. I'm just saying, in your women's division, you need a powerhouse. Rhea. I mean, okay, but I mean, like, she, I don't fit. I don't need a a big monster diva. I, I'm fine with a China, a Rhea, a Beth, somebody who's strong, but I don't need. But okay, but I don't he, need so Karma. I don't need Naya. I don't need. You mean Austin Kong? <laughs> with an H in there. So, you, are you saying that those type of female competitors is what you wouldn't want in your women's roster at all? I don't need them, and you don't need and, them, but well, the, that's what they here, want. Well, and here's the here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. Okay, is you've got people like Alexa, who's this big, going up against going up Naya. against Naya. I don't buy it because Naya will break her in real life. But Nine out have... of ten times, Naya will snap Alexa Bliss in half. Okay, but what and she... it slows Alexa down because she's agile, she's fast, she's quick, and she can't have that match. With somebody of that stature. So here's my thing. It, if let's just say you have Nia, you wouldn't ever want to see her actually have someone like Rhea I was or Shayna or like someone of like a Beth Phoenix or China strong stature go up against. The the flip side of that Nia is the fact that Tamina? I don't think Nia is good. Tamina maybe. Uh, Kong maybe. I'm taking a survey here. Hey, yeah. Are you still bitter about Naya breaking your girl's face? Well, I mean, a little bit, but that just goes back to her being unsafe. She's been not a, a safe it's worker. It's a year, by the way, since that happened. She's not a safe worker. She's clumsy. She's... Uh, now she, I, okay, I, don't know I, I can I agree can... with that because she does bring a toxic environment to their roster, to their division. And also, I, now, have she, you not seen Total Divas? Yeah, she's on Total Divas. I don't That's, know if that. Mm, no, I'm gonna play devil's to advocate. I'm gonna play devil's advocate to where I think you're about to go. That could be a character, but I don't think it is. I was gonna say I it's think, scripted. I, I sometimes think it's real from Naya. They seem genuine. Becky, Alexa, um, 
to a degree, uh, maybe Charlotte. Um, but I she I know. She's but you not see, on the like league. Mandy. Uh, uh, you didn't even mention Mandy and or Sonya, Sonya. Yeah. or Carmella or Amber. Yeah. And they seem Amber. they seem genuine. Uh, like they actually might care about Manly. the people around them. I will say this: that one, who I will not mention the name of, seems actually very humble in that show. Well, so here's the thing. This is what we didn't see. We didn't see that she was actually trying to convince the roster, hey, I'm only coming off as anti-WWE because I'm okay with being the antagonist that this yeah. company needs. Yeah. Like, But wasn't willing to put Becky over at Mania? Did they go over that? I don't know. They better. I think they will. Because it seems like she's always inviting each and every one of them to her house to do the natural way of life things that yeah. she's into I thought that they I thought it was she didn't want to tap to Becky I thought it was she, it, she didn't have a problem with taking the pinfall well why didn't you want to tap because she, she didn't want to she, look she, she didn't she didn't want the the Brock Lesnar Kane Velasquez treatment I'm a real MMA fighter I shouldn't submit to a fake this is woman. not MMA though and that's something that you need to be okay with if you come to WWE. It is staged. Uh, right, but, but more we're getting off. Yeah, we're we're, we're to, yeah we're. They yeah. set history. Natalie and yeah, Natalia and Lacey. Lacey was a lot better this time around than she's been all year. Yeah. I would say this is one of the matches of the night. Yeah. I would love honestly. to see Lacey go against Bailey in the in the next title feud. At least eventually get Lacey that push again, but this time yeah. in the face. Yeah. Let her be a face. Let her be a face. I don't have... Like, I, I get the character. She's supposed to be a little... Sassy. A little sassy. Sassy Southern Belle. Um, be the but lead. I, but it's debutante. also... I think it's also oh. part, of, part of the charm to the character. Not to mention she's a military girl. People yeah. like military She can bring that characters. aspect out of it. Yeah. Because it, it's the that all-American figure. Yeah. What was she, a Marine? I think so. I yeah. think so. Um, I now, I mean, I, I know that Marines are bad drivers, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> have I ever told you that? I'll tell you off air. That's just military that's, that's police. An insight, that's uh, an insight. Military police officer in the U.S. Marines. Yeah. So, she was a Marine. So, she, yeah, people like the, the military. They like people who represent the military because of what it stands for. Especially a division like the Marines. Yeah. Did you see her on Up, Up, Down, Down? Uh, Lacey? Yeah. Was it a recent one or? Maybe like two weeks ago. I but do not. Very, very on. humble. Like. Oh, yeah. Off, out of character. Off and, air. Out of character. She's the most humble My person. mom was like kind of eavesdropping as I was watching. And she's like, oh, like that's a wrestler. She's a Marine. I'm like, yeah. And my mom's like props to her. Because she was talking about like being a mom and like taking care of your kids. And like yeah. changing and, like. And Lacey's, Lacey and her character in her real life is something people want to get behind. They want to support that. Yeah. Former Marine. Um, mother. Hardworking. Striving for her dream. Uh, Motivational. American yeah. I like her. Girl. I like her as a person. I like her as a character. And I, I wouldn't mind seeing her as a face for a minute because I think people will, will get behind her. And that is how I think people will actually click with the character so that if she goes heel again later, You'll they'll, still, they'll yeah. still care about it. Yeah. So, move on. Team Hogan versus Team Flair. Didn't, didn't watch it. I'll, didn't bother I'm going to throw it in there. This match I thought was actually great. I would put this match over... Half the show? No, half of the Survivor Series matches that we've seen in the last couple of years. Because this, without the elimination aspect, was actually a great match, in my personal it, opinion. If you it's have the elimination aspect. This didn't aspect. happen in 2K20, because this match would have gone on for hours. <laughs> you wouldn't even get past the loading screen. <laughs> well, Wait, not, it I'm load? more talking about not being able to get the pin. There's ball. literally moments where people set up a one-on-one -on -one match, and then it'll just go to a black screen and just crashes. Oh, good lord. All right, and then... <laughs> The newly crowned Universal Champion, our favorite, our divisive, devilishly devious fiend. So the only so the, so the only Sorry, major issue on. that I have with this match, and granted, other I think, than the I red think, light, I think I was do dozing off. Is the red light okay? <laughs> because <laughs> um, I was thinking, what did I? I think I watched uh, what, a what culture video that went over these things, oh. or specifically went over the the, the, the fiend match. match. Yeah. 
and they they pray. I think it might have been the ups and downs, but they uh, they were talking about the no cell there at the very end. He throws him into the explosive oh, the thing, boxes, yeah. and Seth goes down like a dumbass. And he sits down. And he's like, "Oh, the tough work, hard day's work here at WWE," and then he gets choked out by the mandible claw because the fiend is just like, "Nope, I'm here. It's showtime." It's Beetlejuice. Um, and s- did you know that one? Yes. Well, you know, I never know with you, man. I never you know what react references sometimes you know. Or pop culture references. So even with the ones you do know. So the the fiend hops up and he's fine, and you're like, "Oh no!" And then he he gets him, and uh, so he mandible claws. He hits the sister Abigail on the floor, and it's over. I don't have a problem with that. And then that promo that I sent you, the little snippet from. Bray is amazing. I've always liked Bray. My dad and I um, went to... <laughs> I'll tell you guys more about this after, after we finish recording. But my dad and I went to a, to a SmackDown taping in... 2013? 2013, I think? When Bray was just sort of on the rise. Yeah. And they, were, they did the, the promo on the thing. And I'm sitting there listening. And I'm just absorbed in it. Because I'm like, he... I don't even understand some of the things he's saying because it's it's yeah. real vague and cryptic. Yeah. But he just sells it. Yeah. Like the way he delivers his lines, he sells it. And he commits to his characters. Firefly Bray? Amazing. Um, you were at first not convinced when he came with that. When right. they, yeah, the, the the first episode of the Firefly Funhouse, keep in mind the stream that I was watching, they, they that got skipped over, and then Bray Wyatt is trending worldwide. I'm like, why is Bray trending? Like, did something happen? Did he get into an accident? What the hell's going on? Then when I go on... Immediately the, goes to the worst possible Well, outcome. what would you think <laughs> if someone is trending and you had, they're not even on the show, you know? Um, but then when you do see it... And then when I did see it, I'm like... You literally, I remember your reaction. You literally were like, what the hell is this? When he grabbed the chainsaw and was going to cut up the billboard of the old, I'm like, don't, please, it's not too late. It, no, no, oh, he cut it. Okay, we're done. But Let's you, go. but he was, he was sold at that point. But here's the thing. I think at that point, nobody knew that this was a Bray Wyatt experience, uh, experiment. I think everybody thought, oh, it's WWE. What are they doing? Now? Like Vince is doing this. He's telling yeah. him to like get rid of this image of his past. Yeah, become yeah. a cartoony character. So that's why I'm like. That's but it. I and then told, you started to see the darkness creep yeah, back and in, I, and you're like, and I kept mm. telling you, like, <laughs> there's a twist. There's going to be a sadistic twist. And as soon as he turned into the fiend, all of you were like, "Holy shit, what is this?" Like, even what the reaction video Cesaro and Seth had, they're like, "Yo, what the hell?" <laughs> Not um, to know that Seth's future was going to be that. <laughs> speaking of hashtag push Cesaro. There it is. Um. I kind of had a problem with it, and the fact that not that it happened or whom it happened. Are we back at the match? Or? The match. Okay, go on. But the pay per view that it happened on. Yeah. I would have been much more happy if we did this at a Survivor Series, or that it should have been done at Survivor yeah. Series. Yeah. Now I think part of it was also again satisfying the mm. the companies because of the fact that we had just had the draft. I made that prediction. I don't know if I said it to you, but I made that prediction that we were going to see the belts swap yeah. that way. And so I, I, I wasn't spot on with the whole Brock Lesnar um, leaving to go wherever. Huh. But I was like, I could see it happening where he loses the belt and then that belt goes over there. Yeah. Know. So, but I, I predicted that they were going to swap the world titles, which right. they did because they always do. You, I think that you can, I kind of saw that coming in a way because you can't have both belts on both on one brand. And I know that back in the day they did it. They did it once. They did a draft where then both world titles were on the same show for a week, and then they did something where I think the became, last draft pick went to yeah, who was Batista, your champion at the time, went to SmackDown. Mm-hmm. But for a, a good couple of weeks, John Cena and Batista, who were your both your champions, were on the same show. Yeah. Which um, builds that, that tension where it's like, oh, is the other show even going to have a world title? Is the Intercontinental title going to have to become one? Um, which, we all know is, which we all know is not what's going to happen. But now, you, now you've got this. So Okay, so 
before we go into the talk of shows and what's been going on, I think that needed to happen. At least the fact that The Fiend gets the win. I would have preferred it, like you said, Survivor Series make yeah. it more legitimate to the bigger population that watches wrestling yes. out here. Uh, but moving on to shows. Well, my, my question real quick about okay. that is where do we go with it to Survivor Series then? Well, right now we're going to That's gray. what's in a cluster because like, it's supposed to be SmackDown versus Raw versus NXT, but then you have Mysterio versus Brock War on the same show, and it's like, well, what happened to SmackDown versus Raw? Because every other match is SmackDown versus Raw versus NXT. Well, is, is, is Brock, are Brock and Ray... They're on they're Raw. Not, no, but they're not, they're not slated for Survivor Series. It's the champions. It's going to be Brock mm-hmm. versus Fiend versus Cole. No, right no, now no. It's Brock it's versus, Mysterio versus they, Brock. They, oh, so now they're changing how their card is structured? Exactly. That's happening because you, you also... There? Yeah, you have Brock versus Ray, and then you have Becky versus Shayna versus Bayley. So, so, like, see, they're not even following Yeah, the I format. thought they were going to uh, Night of Champions this whole thing. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. That's right, because I remember Ray challenging him. Yeah, and then you have Viking Raiders, Undisputed. And what in the hell? Are Which, you... by the way, may, Brock may... versus Fiend? Maybe, maybe the plan is in that case then split the three world, the three top belts, and it, you, we might see, we might see Cole versus Brian versus Seth for the NXT belt. I wouldn't be against seeing that as as one of the big matches. And I then, actually would like to see that. And then you have Fiend versus. <laughs> I don't even know who's on. Well, so Smackdown. okay, this is this is a rumor supposedly that after Survivor Series, the Fiend is supposed to defend the belt against uh, the Miz. What? What? I, I'm sorry. It's at a live show. <laughs> it makes no sense, but that's what's supposed to happen after. Survivor well, maybe Series. they're trying to rebuild the Miz into a into a credible top Carter. I like the Miz. I like the Miz too, but I just it just makes I, no sense to if, story. If, if Seth couldn't take out the Fiend, I don't buy that the Miz can take out the Fiend. Though, then I don't want Roman going. I also don't fiend. want Roman going after the yeah. Fiend. Like how? the Fiend needs to bury everybody that he fights, and he needs to do it in in regular lighting. <laughs> just throw that in there, or at least with the whole spotlight light. Like, yeah, track him. The way, the, track way, him with the, the way he's been attacking everybody, and then yeah, they have like, people literally ringside who are, who are holding that yeah. thing up. So uh, speaking of, of shows, shows, we have what finally appeared in the beginning of October, same night as this show appeared in October. You had the not a coincidence at all. Of uh, well, they announced it first. AEW announced that they were. Premiering with, you know, as they call it on Wednesdays, AEW Dynamite. Dynamite! It's a two-hour show. But then because of that, I, I don't see it as a desperate tactic move from Vince. But instead of having the live stream like we were all used to of NXT, we now get a live showing show, of it yeah. every Wednesday. Around the exact same time as AEW Dynamite. So what did AEW do? They premiered their own YouTube show the day before. A streaming show called AEW Dark. Yeah. So essentially it's like their B list card and all and every now and then an A lister on the show. Um I don't know if you guys have did you did you guys even watch their premiere? I s that's the only episode that I've seen in its entirety. What did you honestly think? Because I, I will tell you what I thought. And I was just like, okay. Honestly, honest, like honest, honest. Um, the Cody match was fantastic. Great. Everything else was, huh? and then the John Moxley spot was like, holy, yeah. And that's it. If you take away John Moxley out of it, I literally felt like I was watching Nitro. It literally, to me, it literally feels well, like... Well, because there was also references, too, by Tony Schiavone, where he's like, we haven't done this since 2001, and I'm like... Yeah, there's a reason why you... you okay, so... There's a reason why you haven't done it since 2001, <laughs> dick. That'll put me in seats. Um, I honestly, like, I, I found it, like, literally, you take John Moxley out, I feel like I'm watching Nitro just on Wednesdays. Yeah. It's, I get it, it's it's... I like the fact that it's like you give wrestling fans options. Yeah. But 
don't compete. Please don't compete. And then right now, what the push is, because they finally have a pay-per-view announcer this Sunday, or I think Saturday. When's the 9th? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Since the, Oh, yeah, all their pay-per-views are on Saturdays. Um, at Imagine full WWE gear. WWE puts their pay-per-views from Sundays to Saturdays now. Oh, Jesus, no. Uh, it's this Saturday, you have AEW Presents Full Gear. Finally doing away with the dumb betting analogies of their pay-per-views. And you have recently going that the American Nightmare Cody is going up against their current... uh, And I hate that they're making this... The youngest AEW champion in history, (laughs) Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is 48 years old, by the way. Well, because he's the only one. (sighs) So I don't know how he's convinced himself to be okay with these promos. Oh, that's hilarious. But Katie Vick? <laughs> sure, that's a bad segue. <laughs> um, I, I, saw, said, I saw that clip from, from Jericho's <laughs> promo. They were chanting stuff at him, and he just goes, Katie Vick! <laughs> I sent you guys a promo that Cody was cutting. I saw it. What did you think? I immediately thought back to any time when Triple H would have a WrestleMania match and he'd be like, if I can't beat you, my career is over. And if you notice, every time that stipulation is in there, Triple H wins the match. It's the same thing as The Rock guaranteeing that he's going to win. Yeah. Whenever that sentence was muttered, The Rock walked out the winner. Right. Or it was like the street. He still finds a way back to that. Of course he does. Sad panda. (laughs) What did you think of the promo? Like what? Like hearing it. I mean, I, as a wrestling fan, I've I've always felt that Cody, um, Cody understood the business. He has a good head on his shoulders. He learned from his father. He learned from his father, not from his brother. Um, and he's always had that star quality, and so, um, I don't know. I I find him to be captivating, but I do know that he's dabbling as that major. Character, I guess that Triple H esque character, mm. where he's front and center all the time. He's the he's the man to beat. Um, I didn't even notice until he brought it up to my attention. Cody thus far has not lost a one on one match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only match that he's lost was the tag team match, where by the way, Dustin took the pinfall. Yeah. Not Cody, Dustin. Okay, I, I'll be fair. Like I, I don't. Watch AEW's Wednesday night show. Hell, I, I barely have time sometimes to watch NXT. It's too much, honestly. It's spread like, out it's too a lot. Much. And yeah. as a wrestling fan, it's like, okay, man, I'm catching up on Raw. I have to catch up on NXT. Oh, crap, it's Friday. I better Smackdown. tune into SmackDown. That's why I Wait, just watched the I just re- recap video. I just realized point. that... Uh, 205 Live is now on Fridays too. God damn, where, where's the point where I get a break? Oh, wait, there's some crazy shit going on in AEW. Because honestly, seeing John Mosley kick Kenny Omega's ass is amazing. Well, he, he's an advocate for that. Now, what I do. No, I'm an advocate for Mosley. <laughs> especially if he's kicking Kenny Omega's ass. Now, what I do appreciate about this era of television and professional wrestling is the fact that it's happening during a time where you've got that ease of access via the internet yeah. where you can sift through what to watch. Yeah. Um, so like I'll pop onto the WWE YouTube channel and I'll look at the matches. I'll say, okay, there's an Io Shirai match. I'm going to watch that one. Oh, okay, here's uh, the th- segment with Rusev. Because I, 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 I don't super care about what's going on, but I'm curious where they're going to go with it. So I'll watch that one too. Let me just remind everybody that you can catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only $9.99. $9.99? It's not $10. It's not $1,000. Nor is it $1 billion. But $9.99. Hour fifteen minutes. That's how that's long. The first, it took. That's the first. Time well, we got I there. I was gonna interrupt was... you at some point twenty minutes ago, but then I'm like, eh. still, that's fifty five minutes. Did someone you, just you say? Were... <laughs> somebody just say fifty five <laughs> minutes? Yeah, that's literally one third of their. Show anyway, like uh, so the the thing that I like about 
the cu- the culture today is that you can kind of pick and choose the things because there's 38 hours of wrestling every week. <laughs> I, nobody, I don't have time for that. What is that? That's a day and a half. I can't sit down I'm for a sure day I, and a half I, out I of can't. my seven days. Yeah, that is a day and a half. Um, but no, I can I can pick out the equivalent of an hour of wrestling that I actually care about. Yes. And I think that it's nice that there's that because back in the day you had the four hours to to Raw to SmackDown. You had uh, WCW when they were alive. Um, were they all, were their shows also two hours? I think two hours. Two and two. Yeah. So you had up. Thunder to, was two hours. Nitro was three. Shh. Okay. So, so you had two. so you had nine hours or at minimum four hours that you just kind of had to sit through or record and then buffer through it yeah. and then retape it next week, but. <laughs> Ah, uh, VHS. And, uh, Good old days. So you were kind of handcuffed to every segment back yeah. in the day. But now, despite the fact that you've got three... You've got eight hours just from WWE. And then not to mention ROH and AEW and New Japan. New Japan uh, there's just a lot going on. So. And if you're an Adam and fan of like particular wrestlers within all these companies, at one point you're just like, all right. Where do I narrow down my time? Where yeah. do I narrow down what's important to watch or what's cool to watch or what's trending? Like you, you still get that definitive look at it. Like, oh, this is one thing I could catch up on, or oh, this is cool. I'll tell you what I don't look up: Matt Riddle matches, bro. <sighs> God, <laughs> I don't care about him. He even even with his... Be- was he the one who first started the invasion? Him and... Uh, what was this guy? Keith Lee? Keith Lee. Yeah. Uh, they, were they the first ones to No, the start? first ones were... I thought they started with the... Was it Baszler. that? Baszler. Yeah, Baszler. Baszler. Baszler was the first started. one. Yep. So she kind of lit the fire. Yeah. Okay. Where are we right now? We're talking about shows. Okay. And, and how many have been premiering and what we think of them. And essentially... What is going to come we'll, out? Of we'll them. probably want to split this episode into two parts. <laughs> Maybe we need to talk about SmackDown on Fox. Uh oh, it, it is. We're in the middle of the current yeah. topic. So what? What's your concern? Fox has like taken over, and I'm talking in like even every it. aspect in po- uh, possible. Because even if you go into YouTube. They now have their own WWE page on Fox. on Fox, and they put highlights, and they put segments, so already you're taking away viewership from the main WWE page. I feel like at one point, you're going to start seeing WWE superstars like on uh, Sunday morning uh, NFL shows. Yeah. Like, oh, we have special guest uh, Kofi Kingston Mine, with us I don't us remember today. who I saw, but it was, uh, it was a post where um, Fox Sports won. You were. It was going to be uh, a Rod, and then John Cena was going to be on a separate. Kevin segment. last yeah. night, yeah, yeah, last night. And then supposedly AEW is doing it with TNT, where they have Jericho on inside NBA. Cool. So it's like you have wrestlers bleeding into mainstream, which I don't uh, have a problem with. I mean, they're they're pop culture. I yeah, guess. they're also athletes, and we glorify athletes. Because so, athletes like, are fans of WWE and wrestling as well. Yeah. yeah. But you feel that Fox has put their own touch yeah, on I Smackdown. For, I forget who it was that brought it to my attention. I don't know if it was you, Dan, if it was you, Kamish, or if it was someone else. The first episode of SmackDown on Fox, like the debuting episode, had a heavy influence of Fox. Oh, I brought it up. I told I told you guys that I felt like... It's not something USA would produce. It, Be- it literally looks like, how can we promote everything Fox on something that used to be USA? Well, World. think about how uh, BS it is because they just took a crap on on everything that was WWE. You had someone who had worked 11 years to get a WWE championship, finally gets it. Bless him. He tried to make it the best reign possible and then just loses it in eight seconds. Only for someone who is not a WWE superstar to just come down and take the the closing minutes. Like, apparently, Austin and Taker were backstage. Yeah. Because they're like, we might use you guys. Can you please come around? And someone even threw out a comment like at Taker was like, hey, Taker, you were a big part of SmackDown. Why were you not on the episode? And Taker was like, apparently, I was not needed. That's what I was told. And we're not really? talking about his 
quote unquote half brother came and talking about came Now I'll play a little bit of devil's advocate in that I I, I feel like I'm it, sorry, am I kicking you? No, you're fine. Oh. Um I feel like it's it's accept I, I, I don't have a problem with them on the weekly basis kind of distancing themselves from the stars of yesteryear because we should be focused on these new people and developing a, an affection for these people. But there was also the news when they first made the deal with Fox that Fox wanted to produce the show to look like an actual like fighting show as opposed to um, what we were seeing on USA. So they were trying to change the production value of it, and that's fine. Then you've got things like that where they're like, all right, well, let's bring in these, these real fighters to spice it up a little bit. But now then you're taking the people who are actually employed by WWE – and costing them airtime for the Cain Velasquez's and Tyson Furies of the world just because they've got more mainstream appeal. So what I didn't know who the hell Tyson Fury was until I didn't know he either. showed up. Yeah. I knew he was a boxer. I just didn't think he needed to be bled into yeah. WWE. It might, it might have been to get more people to tune in in the UK which is already a pretty heavy spot for professional wrestling. And boxing. And boxing. But, eh. Look, I remember you literally text, I think, the group. And you're like, what the F is this? Like, this is BS. After like, the You premiere? were upset. Yeah, you were upset at the first episode. I told you, I was like... This has Fox written all over it. Right. Like, I, that's how I felt. I yeah. felt like Fox convinced Vince, like, hey, we want to do some of our stuff on your show. And Vince was like, money. Yeah. Uh, you're okay? Money. Okay. We'll do whatever we want, guys. And I told you guys when it came to Saudi, when it came to Fox, it's not so much, hey, like, what do the fans want? It's how many juggernauts can we team up with and just make money? And how much money can we give Vince so he can be happy and... Poorly invested in the XFL, which, by the way, they also tried to show something off air to the live crowd, and the live crowd booed excessively for the XFL. Um, I mean, it's stupid. Um, How is it the XFL if they're trying to, like, tame it down like the NFL, is my question. I don't know. I mean, the, the the thing that pisses me off is, and this is the same thing that should be pissing off the players. Do you guys recall how much a player's uh, allegedly being paid? Like what the, the average XFL? what the average salary is? No. Fifty five thousand dollars. You're expecting a professional ish football player to pe- play an aggressive sport with potential concussion risk. For just for for the for less than the amount of money that a store manager at a retail store makes in a year makes in a year. Not only that, so I'm risking, uh, and I think it said that they're not even getting health insurance through the XFL. So you're you're risking concussion damage, torn, torn, yeah, torn muscles, torn ligaments, things that could end your career. Which technically, these are players who had to dwindle down their careers because yeah. of injuries from the NFL. Exactly, and you're paying them astronomically less than a professional NFL player. Hell, I'll go sit on the bench if we get in the team fifty five k a game. Because here, uh, like one million divided by eight. So if you offered somebody a $1 million a year, eight-year contract in the NFL, they would still make twice as much as one of these guys is making. Because the league minimum in the NFL is at least, for a veteran contract, is $500,000. Yeah. A million depending on your name. Yeah. So you're, you're lowballing these guys and expecting them to just be okay with it. Like... No offense to the guy, but Antonio Brown said, no, uh, XFL not even on my radar. And this is a guy who just got canned from four NFL teams for rape allegations. So if a guy who is uh, blacklisted 
from the NFL is still saying, nah, I'm worth more than... He makes more in endorsement deals that he probably hasn't been dropped from yet than he would make as an XFL player. That's insane. (laughs) But what does that tell you? What does that tell you about, like, Vince's mind state? Again, like, we... Like, honestly, okay, look, I want to ask you this, not as a WWE fan, but as a wrestling fan in general. When you're watching SmackDown, do you feel like it's the same product as it was 20 years ago? No. Why do you feel that way? Because there's no structure. I could go back and I... I'm not even going to go 20 years back. I will go to NXT and I will watch the show and I'm like, there is a structure. Every single match that I am seeing is for a purpose, whether that's for a title, whether it's for a feud, whether it's for an angle, whether it's for something else. A promo. A promo. Uh, Everything is leading to something. So with this Fox deal, do you feel like they've lost that direction? They've lost that direction even before Fox. Did did you feel that way when Sci-Fi had SmackDown? What year are you talking? What was it? Oh, eight? Probably around there. I would say more of a structure back then, so yes. Okay, so do you feel like the way WWE is trending towards like finding these lucrative deals with like sports channels, like if Vince decided Monday Night Raw is now going to be brought to you by ESPN, how upset would you be? Very. What's on ESPN right now on Mondays? Football? Yeah, Monday Night Football, <laughs> right? So, obviously, oh, you can catch WWE Monday Night Raw on ESPN 2. Yeah. That's now, like, now that's like their sister, the like right Baby Channel, whatever. Like, you would feel like if you're watching Raw, okay, you know, I'm still watching Raw. Oh, why am I seeing ESPN announcements? Yeah. Why am I seeing that? And... It, Keep it in turns mind, it ESPN, into an advertising yeah. vessel. ESPN, by the way, is owned by one of the biggest companies right now in the world, Disney. Yeah. So not only would you be annoyed, you would feel like there is no structure. It's just all about money. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, that's how it is now. Now that Raw is is just its own thing, that's how I feel about it now. Well, okay. Do you feel? Do you feel like the the brands right now like are? Worse this year than they were last. Because what were we saying last year, this time around? That Raw has no structure. Raw is literally, like you said, okay, we have whatever's in our whatever we can grab and a pile of stuff, throw it against Throw-to-go. the wall. Uh, fall, fall. Oh, Roman. Yeah. Uh, Brock. Um, Drew. That's it. We got. Let's write a show around that. We had this last week, guys. Shut up. It's still on the wall. Five seconds. Bane character. Like, do you, did you do you feel like if a company like ESP, like if Vince sold Raw to ESPN or signed a deal with them, would you feel at that point like the show would get worse? Yes. And is Probably. it? I, I'm gonna be completely serious. So I think you guys might have noticed that this past Friday when they had NXT invading SmackDown leading up to Survivor Series. You guys could probably tell I was pissed. I I never noticed. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm fun. I'm I know, but you you, you even noticed no, I was yeah, kind you, of you I was cutting you off, and I'm like, no, this is crap. I'm not buying it. Can I tell them? So if you didn't watch SmackDown, obviously the NXT invasion started, and the shot wasn't really on board with it just because of what was going on just because the crime jewel happened the night before half the roster wasn't back and uh dan the man and i were kind of advocating it just because we can finally piece together a particular storyline we've been wanting to see for like over a year now yeah dan four horse women versus, versus. the four ho- horse women <laughs> that's hard that was difficult to say Um, but then you saw everything else happen. Real quick, I just want to throw this in there so it's on tape. Uh, mild spoiler alert for tonight's SmackDown, there will be a title change. I just saw this online. So tune in. Go on. Oh, lovely. And (laughs) we were seeing everything else happen. Other than, okay, 
I only enjoyed the fact that Shayna came on the show and did what she did to Bailey because, like I said, I'm not an advocate for Bailey's new change, her look, whatever. I, I'm not buying into it. That part of the invasion, I was like, finally, we're finally going to make it happen. We'll finally get Ronda back. We'll get uh, Jasmine and uh, Marina okay. on board to do it. However, then you saw the Matt Riddle and what was his name? Keith, Keith, Keith Lee. Lee. And that is attack what pissed Sami Zayn. me beyond belief. And then what What else happened? Then you saw... Tommaso Ciampa, um, not attack, but it went on Miz TV and then they had a match and then he, Tommaso Ciampa won the match. And then you had the Undisputed Era. Adam and Cole. And yeah. Adam Cole lead the way. Yeah. And then of course, it all techni- technically it all started once Brock left and you just saw Sean and Hunter yeah. in the arena like, oh, guess it's time for us to take over. Like you knew... At that point, like, okay, something's going to happen. But as the whole night transpired, you were just growing more and more upset because of the events that happened. I think it almost would have been an interesting story thread if we saw Brock leave and then you had the NXT people start to do, like, like just start like showing up. the show. And then you have Brock show back up briefly and he just kind of runs a bunch of them off and he's like, this is my show. I run this place. Get out of here. But or he could have do done that on Raw as well. Like, I'm the reason why people watch Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, not because of you guys. Yeah. But then that would say a lot about Brock. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least Brock now. If you had Brock then do it, they would, I would probably buy into it more. Yeah, because you could have had Brock sort of run off the NXT roster and then attack whoever, attack his own people, whoever was being jumped by NXT. And he's like, I have no allegiance, but you guys aren't taking up my time. <laughs> You're all in my way. <laughs> that would have been, that, I think that would have been a fun story thread, but they didn't do it. And now we got him focusing on Rey Mysterio, who I don't believe is a credible threat. What? David versus wow. Goliath. Rey is too little. It's just like Nia okay, versus fine. Alexa. He's, he's baby <laughs> David against Goliath. Like I, like I bought Eddie beating Brock because Eddie was still he was still he muscular. Was he was strong. He was tough. And Rey is this, like Jesus. Rey's an a third of. Of Eddie. Did you guys see Brock F5 Ray on to Cain Velasquez? Or I think it was Do- Dominic. Yeah. But into the wall? It, it was uh, like throwing a, a, a... Like throwing a discus at one point. A loaf of bread. <laughs> it was like me taking a loaf of bread and just throwing it at the wall. Oh, shit. Sit down, wheat bread. Consequently, Ray Mysterio's new nickname, wheat, wheat bread. bread. So... <laughs> But your point, like, you feel like the direction these shows are... Like, what does that make you feel Here's about the, the direction thing. of the shows? NXT Innovating SmackDown is great TV. My gripe with the whole situation is that this was not done naturally. It was just the plan B of, oh, half of our town is in <laughs> Saudi. Nobody got back. Yeah, nobody got so back. Wrong. What do we do? Oh, just bring NXT in here and we can maybe start building Survivor Series. I do think it's... I, I, I would argue that it's a happy accident. That, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. But like, it's a happy accident that, what according to you, has gone wrong. Has I, it gone wrong or do you just think it's, I wouldn't it's say gone forced. wrong. I just didn't... In, like To me, it wasn't believable that NXT just came and just bulldozed through everyone. Like You should have had... It was panic constructed. Yeah, it should have been like, okay, maybe SmackDown gets a jab in, still gets knocked out, but still gets a jab in, maybe gets a punch in, but it, but it was like, no, just NXT over, just overran them. bulldozed them over. It's like, okay. Because who was destroying like Dana, Brooke, and uh, Carmella? Rhea Ripley and Tiga Knox, yeah. which was random. Like yeah. I'm like, why are you pairing those two together? It, it didn't make any sense to me. Aren't they both from NXT UK, though? Well, and Tiga Knox okay, from maybe. UK. Maybe that's it. But the, the thi- my thing is, and I think I voiced this to you during BA Select Start, which was you, you, your NXT people are good. Like They're good performers. They're solid workers, and they're skilled. But you don't see them enough. They don't get enough exposure versus the main roster. And like the, the rate, we were talking about the rating system across mm. the superstars. Do you know what the top, the top rankings are on 2K20? No. So, Brock, who is it? Brock, Brock and The Rock. Lesnar. Brock Lesnar and The Rock are 93. That's the highest? That's Those the are the highest. three, the, or the two highest. 
the highest NXT superstars are 84. And that's Gargano and, and Adam Cole. It's funny because that's the two names I can only think of. Wait. <laughs> Chum- so you mean to tell me Ciampa, Ciampa and Velveteen are... two. Where's Velveteen? I think he's 81. What? Yeah. They're, they're down there. Okay. I got to ask him this because I really... All your feelings aside for Basha Sanks... Just uh, hold on. All right, go ahead and ask. All your feelings aside, so Becky Lynch is a 90 in the game. Yeah, current Becky Lynch is a Current game. Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey are 90. Fair. Guess where Sasha Banks is. Current, assuming, current Sasha. I'm assuming in the 70s. Close. She's an 80. Ah, uh, no. Current and the Sasha ultimate, is an 80. And the ultimate spit in the face is that Sa- 2017, 2017 Sasha, Sasha Banks is an 81. So she's rated higher in the past. <laughs> so okay. It's, so it's not okay. Even, my, my, my grievance aside, that's BS. Thank you. Because it's not even like a thing where it's like, oh, it's a retired wrestler. Like, I can see things like uh, in his prime Shawn Michaels being a 91 and then current I think it was the way, that way in one of the earlier games where old, uh, old Shawn Michaels was 91 current Shawn Michaels 89 yeah because age catches up to everybody yeah but it's been two years and she's still an active competitor and you're gonna kick her down a notch Nah, she. I yeah, think I, Sasha should have at BS. least been like an eighty-three if you're gonna have those two at a at a ninety. But now we're talking video games. But the fact of the matter is that you needed to do something to to bring to bring NXT up to the same level as the other two shows no, leading just, into Survivor like, Series. According to him, just massively shoot them up there already. Like, yeah. Now, granted, it was done as sort of an overcompensation where it was like, okay, NXT, go out there, you're gonna beat the shit out of everybody. But this, is, but this is my thing. That but when of... you've got your top <laughs> NXT stars at an 84, and your top WWE guys are like minimum 87, eh, come on. All right, where does AJ Styles rank? Oh, Jesus. He's pretty, he's like a 90. He's not a 90. He's not a 90. No, I don't think so. Last year, he was a, he was a 90 well, something. He was also your cover star last year. Okay, where is he and where is the OC at? That's, that's the one thing I want to know. Oh, OC is like 20. low on the list for sure. Okay, fine. We'll say, we won't even look, just look up AJ. Because this is the point I want to make. And this is where I feel like I understand your grievance. For the, the recent happenings of what's going on. If you really want to know, the one part that just pissed me beyond belief was the Sami Zayn part. And why? The way he was acting like a goof during an interview. Oh, those NXT... A- AJ's a 91. Okay. Go on. Uh, how he was acting like a goof. like Those NXT guys. Oh, Keith Lee, Matt Riddle. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. And I'm like, this guy was your top baby face just three years back. What the hell did you do with him? They just squashed him. Like... Let, let me give you some some fr- a frame of reference real quick. Xavier Woods is an 85. So Xavier outscores Gargano and Adam Cole. Continue. That's so sad. Because now I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the OC. Uh, the reason why I ask this th- this is why I ask it. If you think about it, 81. What? Both both of them. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's a 10 point difference between the two. Correct. Okay. So. As you saw, all of the roster attacked SmackDown. Yeah. Half the roster attacked Raw. And all you had from both the rosters was the OC do all the damage at NXT. Yeah. Do you do you realize that? That that was their way of proving, hey, we don't care who NXT is. The three of us alone, if we wanted to, could destroy your entire roster. Well, see, that's the other part, too, is, like, you have NXT, who, in, in story storyline, is someone who's trying to essentially invade your show. Mm-hmm. And you put Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins to fend them off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Bless them. Hey, I've... hey, they used to be the Edgeheads. When? Ten years ago? <laughs> yeah, back when they were in 86. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying on this day, I see clearly. Uh, it's a good song. I like, I like Metalingus. Point being, it, it, you felt like this 
the way the shows are going, the way this was going, that it didn't feel natural to you, right? It didn't feel like it, it, was, it rushed. was meant to happen. It, you were in a corner and you, you, there was no way out and you thought, what do I do? Much like last year when all of a sudden they brought up Gargano, Elister Black, Champa. Oh, last year was this year. Earlier, Earlier in the year. This year when, yeah, when was they brought it? those four. Yeah. They brought those four up and then Champa got hurt and then they just threw Gargano back down in NXT but kept the other two. <laughs> okay. Almost made them tag champs and then didn't make them tag champs and mm-hmm. then split them up. But do you see it you seems have like them compete for each freaking title in like a week? But do you see how it's when it's like ratings are going down, we got no ideas. Get NXT in here. Yeah. It's like and your it, go to and that's the problem, is like they're the they're your like shock value ratings boost thing right now. But you know you how you were you talking don't about them that way. You know how you were talking about Oscar and the Green Mist. Yeah, it, it's kind of the same thing. Here. That's how you feel yeah. about it. Yeah. How do you, how do you make the match interesting? Green Mist. Uh, we're, except we're doing it every every match. Every oh, match. Okay. <laughs> well, that that's how now it seems now. It's got now. less impact. Ratings are going down. NXT. Okay, but I, it, what I feel like it is, it's. I hate to compare it to this. It's like your NWO 2.0. Like they're there. But they're not going to be there forever. Yeah. They're going to be gone soon. Yeah. Because after Survivor Series, NXT is going to focus back on itself and their right. own rivalries. I bet you, even if we get what we've been wanting with the four versus four, Shayna will go right back. Yeah. Shayna, Jasmine, and uh, Marina. Uh, Marina will all be right back at NXT worrying about their rivalries with yeah. all the women's roster they got to deal with. You'll get... Maybe I'm, you'll I'm get Ronda wait, finally I'm back. I'm still waiting for Rhea versus Shayna. That's going to be a fun match. Well, they had a one, but then it ended on disqualification. Yeah, but I, it needs to be like legit fight. Yes, yeah. like on their and next paper. And I don't want it gimmicked. I don't want like a cage match. Straight up match. Thing. Yep. Like, I, I want to see the most brutalizing woman against like the craziest European woman I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Or if they do, like, I wouldn't even be object to uh, like a... I feel like it's been a long time since we did like an elimination fatal four way kind of match like the WrestleMania two thousand. Right. They did that with her with like her, her, Rhea, EO, and I don't know, you could do Candace, I guess, if you really no. wanted to. She's had enough chances. Candace Candy. or EO? Candace. Has she? Has she had a lot of chances? I thought she only got the one. The one. Yeah, but it's Eo just, had it like just, three, so but I still like feel, watching her. But I'd rather see heel Eo Shirai. Yeah. Yeah. Because it would make more sense. Like if if you're gonna make Eo win, you have her like take the most punishment and last the longest yeah. the match. Or championship scramble match. Oh no. Of course. Ugh. I miss those. I'm not gonna lie. Those Some good of them matches, were fun. Man. Who like, did you have in the match though? Well the four I just listed and then uh, But it's uh, six Okay, throw in. I thought they did five. Five. Last it's usually five. five. Okay, so Candice, EO, Shayna, Rhea, Rhea, and. Mia Yim? I don't like Mia. Mm. I don't like her. Um, Dakota Kai? Maybe. Since she just came back, she's fresh. I'm trying to remember who she else. She gets was one shot and then out of nowhere, roll up. Because <laughs> I, I don't really like Bianca either. No offense to her. Yeah. But, I, her her gimmick's a little her, her gimmick's weird. I don't like the hair whipped thing anymore. <laughs> she shouldn't be allowed to do it. That's the thing. So anyway. main point. You see how the shows are trending. You see what the shows are becoming. Do you feel like the quality is being lost just because of the greed? Yeah. Or do you feel like there still is time for change? I've been telling you guys, and I'll tell you again, it's no longer what do the fans want. It's how many juggernauts we can team up with and make money. It's like WWE is constantly caught in a bank account scramble match. Which I don't <laughs> get why. And, and, and that's what... Huh, there it is. And that's what makes me feel like, okay, well... You have AEW coming in. They finally have their weekly show. They have their online show now. They seem to be getting like everybody who's like either blacklisted themselves from WWE or they've left the company on bitter, like sentiment. Nope. Yeah, and it's like okay, you see all those people who have been bitter, and they're doing their best to make the rival as big as possible. 
but yet people still tune into Dodo anymore. Well, like, it's because they they are they're everywhere. That's the thing. WWE is three of the shows during the week. AEW is one. And then on like because uh, that's the other thing is on Wednesday, yeah, you've got the competition between NXT and AEW now, but there are two days where A- AEW doesn't have anything going on. Yeah. So. It just has some random thing on the one day. Yeah. WWE doesn't. Just like just like TNA. When TNA, uh, they only ever had one show, right? Yeah. They're still hiring. <sighs> I've heard as of recent, it, it's been a lot better. I don't know. Who runs TNA? Or I'm sorry, Impact. Is it Dixie Carter? Not anymore. She she's been gone for a couple of years now. Oh. I don't know. I don't care. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, anything else on the agenda? Well, we covered pay per views. We covered. Uh, Dynamite. Dynamite. We covered Ross Smackdown and NXT. Uh, the whole Fox thing. The only other thing is just Survivor Series, but we kind of covered it throughout the entire show. I mean, there's what? Four matches right now? Do we want to do a quick review of those four matches? Let's do it. Brock Lesnar. Oh, I'm sorry. The reigning, defending, undisputed WWE champion, Brock Jesus. You alright, Paul? Need some water? Brock Lesnar. Good lord. Versus the teeny tiny... Need some of that Philadelphia tap water. (laughs) I don't know how Paul even does it. There we go. Uh, Versus uh, the master of the 619. The 600. The ultimate underdog. Rey Mysterio. For the WWE Championship. So, Brock was originally supposed to be in that triple threat match, from my understanding, with the other two world champions. So now I don't know what they're going to do. I already voiced the fact that I don't buy Ray as a credible opponent to Brock. And I think we saw them back in, like, 2003 or something. Face off. And Brock destroyed him. I don't think it's any different now. Is the ma- the match isn't even a no disqualification match, right? So Ray can't use his patented chair. Uh, there will probably be a ref bump, and then the chair will get involved. Yeah. But Brock, I don't think is going to lose the the title. Or Dominic Ray. will be there. That's what or... I was thinking. Yeah, we'll probably see. Uh, I don't know. We'll probably see Brock al- almost lose the title to Ray due to face interference by Dominic and possibly Kane. Yeah. Um, but then he's still gonna walk walk out with the belt because he's Brock Lesnar. That that's the excuse right there. That's the the only thing you need is because he's Brock Lesnar, he's gonna walk out with the belt. I will just say this: as of the last year and a half, anytime when Brock is in the ring with a small guy, he tends to have a very good match. Yeah. So I mean, I, you've seen it happen. With yeah. Daniel Bryan. Finn Balor, AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan. So I'm like, Brock's, he's just so strong that whenever he's against really small people I'm always worried for their well-being <laughs> because I think he under like I weigh as much as Rey Mysterio does and I feel like if Brock hit me with the F5 he would just chuck me and I would <laughs> land I'd probably break my forearm and be uncomfortable I think I would die <laughs> and like when he threw Dominic anytime he's thrown Dominic I'm worried for Dominic because yeah. I don't think Dominic is like, what career is Dominic going to have this morning because of Brock Lesnar. But, like, throwing him into the ring post, throwing him onto Cain Velasquez, I, he, throwing Ray into the wall. I'm just concerned. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Who are you picking? Brock. Brock walks out. Brock. I the, yeah, Brock. Next. Uh... So the apparently, I, apparently, I locked myself out of my own freaking computer. I don't know how the hell I did that right now. I think Shayna. Well, I'm gonna just move on to that. Shayna wins. I think Shayna is gonna walk what's, out of the triple threat. Shayna, Becky, Becky and, and Bailey. Bailey. So, uh, Shayna. I, I Bailey I, is a non-factor as much as she's trying to throw herself in. Like, oh, they're not. They're just gonna keep their eye on me. Not I call no that. contest. I think Shayna walks out with the win. 
potentially with interference from Ronda. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm calling a no contest because everyone in this match is part of a four horse women group. Yeah. I wouldn't but be. But who so- does Ronda. Becky. Oh, Becky's got to be her go to for sure. Becky's going to take the fall. It's not a title match. She can afford to lose this one. No, but like. I do, feel like we're talking about like, our prediction at the same time. But so do I'm you feel like she attacks Bailey first, then Becky? No. No, Bailey's going to be on the outside. Oh, uh, so Bailey's still a non factor. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're they're gonna sweep her under the rug during this match because it's not about Bailey. It's about Becky. Skippy. I'm just not gonna Like they even said it in the promo between Be- Becky they're and like, Shayna. I'm not gonna like, keep my eye off of Bailey, but yeah. But I'm I'm focused on you, which means this match is about those two and how it's gonna move us forward. And Obi, Obi, and so Obi. I so I def- I think that we're gonna see, um. Now, what I would do, which I think we talked about in one of the previous matches, where I don't remember if Becky tapped, but I don't think Becky should tap. I think she should get choked out by the Kirifuda. Yeah. And I think that's how the match should end. I think Ronda should return. Maybe not engage, but it'll be one of those kind of cheap-ass uh, distraction things where... na 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 and she comes out to the ramp and Becky's like what are you doing here what are you doing here and Shayna slaps her and the Kirifuda chokes her out and she wins the match that's what I think is going to happen or there will be a ref bump in that match Ronda comes out hits the Piper Pit Piper's Pit and then Shayna picks up the win but I I think Shayna walks out Kamish? So we've got a no contest in a triple threat match. I'm sorry, I'm like really. The hell do you think this is? Hell in a cell? <laughs> if, if, they can uh, stop, if they can stop a hell in a cell match, you can. Best you can dodge ball. a wrench. If you can dodge a wrench. You can dodge a ball. Kamish, come on, prediction. I'm giving it to Shayna by outside interference. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're all uh, in the we're same on the direction. Mr. Triumph and return. We're all headed in the same direction on this one, uh, Even with that's slight not what you were with say. slight variances. Uh, what what else we got? We got the Viking Raiders versus. Don't even care. The <laughs> who are this? Uh, when is when Survivor champ? Series? Twenty fourth. When are the who are the NXT Tag Champs? <laughs> yeah, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and yeah, Bobby Fish. And then you have. Well, this one's up the for revival. debate. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't really care about this. Undisputed Era should also walk out of this one. Yeah, I think I, they're the most credible. Especially if you're trying to build Undisputed Era as the overlords of NXT. I think they, they have to be dominant in some way. And yeah. I know uh, there's going to be a lot of big guys in this match um, that they'll have to overcome. And uh, I would hate to see a specific person take the fall um, in this match uh, in order for Undisputed Era to go over. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Who are you talking about? No. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) Spoiler. And apparently there is one more match. What Uh is it? It's the women's five on five on five. There's a women's five on five on five? No one announced... Did it say who's in it? Nobody? Nobody's announced. Oh, except for Carmela and Dana Dana Brooke. For Team SmackDown. See, this is what I'm... 15 people in a match. I just saw this. Hold on. Hold on. I'm literally reading. Apparently, there's a fifth match. You're not going to believe who. Who's the fifth match? (laughs) You're going to... What? Yeah. Yeah. What? This has to be somebody fucking... Screwing with the the Wikipedia page. That can't be real. It is the former <laughs> 16-time limousine riding, jet flying. It's got to be somebody messing with Wheeling dealing page. versus Hogan. Son of a gun. Nope. nope. Versus one of his greatest rivals of all time, WCW wrestling history. No, no, that, no, that's, no. That's the icon. No, no, that, no. That's no. what it says. It's gotta be You're somebody messing Turn with it the around. Sting versus Ric Flair. You're bullshitting. It says it on I'm... there. I guarantee you it's somebody who snuck past the, 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 security. the security on Wikipedia and is just screwing with it. 
<laughs> Wait, more important question. Why is Dana Brooke on the team? Why not? She's on SmackDown. Out of all people? <laughs> you need filler. It's 15 women. What do you want? I like those odds. Oh, actually, look. It's already got the spoiler in there. What? For the, the other match. <laughs> it's already on there. That's cute. Yes! <laughs> so they're already in there. <sighs> okay, so let's talk about Sting versus Ric Flair. Thoughts, gentlemen? It's happened <laughs> way too many freaking times already. And it's not actually gonna happen again. I don't... I don't buy it. Oh, this is a mess. Indeed. <sighs> Indeed. Kai and Tai. Funaki, SmackDown number one announcer. Indeed. I get it. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, so that's Survivor Series so far. Uh, we'll, we'll see how this all shapes up, I suppose. So how do you guys feel that a month of us being gone has felt? Well, I mean, a lot of, lot of stuff. A lot of yeah. stuff's transpired. Just like the fact that they keep trying to make things happen that shouldn't happen. Quit trying to make fetch happen. I mean, I'm just saying, like, the, it, was there a point for a disqualification in Hell in a Cell? I, I don't understand. I mean, the thing I'm most I'm most interested in is the uh, the four on four horsewomen match that I we're, mean, we're I was building. I'm just toward. saying things happen I, for a reason. I, I just and, think that know, uh, why did they Shana have to happen like that? Can we There's just no stop need with the Saudi, Saudi Arabia paper? I, mean, I don't get going, going why nowhere. Why did that happen to the series? How do you disqualify someone? I guarantee you, Ronda Rousey is coming back. Don't start with that because I know nobody wants to see her back and go on to the spot guys. And we're not here to do it. The way you should. Shayna Baszler and the Four Game Horsewomen Submission. are gonna no bring it. You. Okay, but listen. Remember. Hashtag push Cesaro.